Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Amy, the MC for this section. Um, please welcome our next speaker, Anne Mika Bovlet, hailing all the way from the Netherlands and now residing in Germany. With over 25 years of web development experience, she's a seasoned expert in digital accessibility. Her talk will focus on bending arguments against accessibility by making it relatable to daily life. Let's welcome Anne Mika Bovlet. First of all, I'm stoked to see so many people here today. And before I start talking to you, who in here is already working in accessibility? No hands? Cool. Who is planning to work in accessibility? I love you. That's wonderful. All right. I'm Annemieke Bovelet, like I was so kindly announced, and I'm going to talk about how to, argue, how to counter arguments against accessibility when designers and developers or decision makers give you a hard time. Right? A little bit about me, but not too much, because then you'll be bored out of your mind. Most people call me Anne, because Annemieke is hard to remember, so feel free to do so. You can always come to me and talk to me through any channel possible. I welcome that very much. I'm also very direct. If I'm too direct, please let me know. I'm trying to find the order of what you see and what I see. OK. So I created my first commercial website 26 years ago. I had no idea what I was doing. I was using this horrible tool called Front Page. But, <laughs> but at that time, that was the thing. Everything worked, it looked great. And I've been self employed since 2008 because I figured out if I want to go my way in this work, I have to be able to decide for myself what I do. I'm part of the target group of accessibility. And something that is important to know is that many people think like, oh, you have to be in this job for a hundred years to understand what it is about. I didn't discover accessibility until four years ago. There was a tweet about accessibility. It made me cry. I'm not going to tell you which one, you can find it on my website, because I do like traffic to my website, who doesn't? <laughs> right? Okay. I am part of the group that is what I call the lesser suspects, because we all know that in accessibility, everybody thinks this is for people with visual impairments, people with motoric impairments, but the group of people that accessibility for is way bigger than people think. This is the base for what I'm talking about today. Because we need to work on getting the assumptions that people have out of the way. I have ADHD, ASD, dyslexia, dyscalculia. I can't read a map if my life depended on it. And I'm 53. That's not an impairment, <laughs> but my eyesight is really bad. So what you will learn today is how you can motivate developers, designers, content creators, and how you can use that knowledge to motivate decision makers. Because making things accessible is the right thing to do, right? We do this because we're social creatures. But the hard fact is, in this world, it's not about how social we are, but how are we going to eat? Who is going to pay for that? 
Small changes happen through love and kindness. Big changes, unfortunately, through greed and capitalism. This is one of the bases that I use in my argument to convince decision makers. Okay. So, is this talk for you? Well, we already established that we have a very mixed audience. Yes, it's for all of you. And of course, I um, base the talk on the assumption that you already know things. But if you hear me use expressions or anything that is new to you, please speak up. I'm one of those speakers where you can just rattle into her talk and say, hey, I have no idea what you're talking about. It's fine. Okay. The examples I share are based on my personal experience, which is only like four years old. Some of you have many years more of experience in your pocket. So if you have not heard the arguments that you struggle against, I would ask you to note them down now and share them with me and with the entire audience here. And let's discuss how we can counter them at the end of this presentation. Okay. So, that's what I just said. This is typical Anne. I don't know where I'm at all the time. This is the reason why I have a ton of slides. I have to. Otherwise, I'll be talking here for the next two hours and you'll be sleeping. Okay. So, I refer to blog articles on a few occasions. And um, at the end of this presentation, I'm going to share one short link where you can find all the articles I refer to, including a couple of bonus resources. All right. This talk, like I said, is a two-way street. You get to share your arguments. We talked about this. You can make a list of arguments and share them with me. Right. The arguments. Okay. The first set of arguments is based on disbelief. Arguments like these can feel like the toughest ones. People who say, when you say, this website needs to be adjusted, people say, yeah, it works for me. Right? We all know that one. It works for me. Yeah. Or, we don't have any disabled visitors. There is this lady in the Netherlands, her name is Rian Rietveld. She's from the Alley Collective, or the Accessibility Collective. She wrote an article called Blind People Don't Visit My Website. It's one of the best articles I ever read. It gives you a battery of arguments because she went to Twitter and she asked people, hey, for anybody who knows that they are not hindered by any impairment, what bothers you about the web? And the number of arguments that she got was overwhelming stories. People who said, I cannot read the, the fonts, they're too small. Or when the sun shines, I can't read the screen, or tons of it. And this whole list, in the end of the article, she concludes, those are all accessibility issues. Okay, so another argument, when you tell a designer, for example, you need to make this design accessible, and they will go like, what? I've been doing this for so many years, and I went to school so-and-so, and training so-and-so, and this is how I learned it. What is very important is that we come with bad news, in essence, to these people. We tell them, like, what you're doing is wrong. Nobody wants to hear that. It's, it's, it's smothering your creativity. Another set of arguments of disbelief. Are you saying I'm a bad designer or bad developer? How dare you? Who are you to tell me I'm a bad developer? And maybe we didn't even say they're a bad developer. We just said, hey man, sorry, but there is no focus on the links in this page. That doesn't make you a bad developer. 
it means you have to adjust something in the code. It's very hard to reason with people who are in a state of anger. We all know that. They, that they do not process any information. Now, what is important before you even start argumenting with people is to, to take a step back and actually see what is happening with this person. Why is this person so defensive? Why are they angry? And then try to relate with this person. Like, I am not trying to kick your shin here. This is a thing that we do together. Okay. Um, another one is... Hey, you know there's a plug-in for that, right? <laughs> Many of you know what's coming here, right? We're talking about the overlay plugins. That's a topic that I could do five talks in a row about. Does anyone not know what an overlay plugin is? Yeah? Okay. An overlay plugin, sometimes you get onto a website and then you see this very obvious disability symbol. Usually it's blue with a guy standing like this. Sometimes it's a wheelchair. And then when you click that button, it's going to give you a gazillion of options and you can change the contrast and the font size and the... Most people are not aware that this actually hinders accessibility. I have friends who use screen readers who say, if I click, if I turn that on, I cannot use this website anymore. And we are angry in the accessibility world. We're so angry with all these overlay plugins and we're going like, wow, they're bad and they're commercial and they just want to make money over the back of handicapped and impaired people. And what is important is that we need to remember that everybody is coming from a good intention. The people who create these plugins originally came from a good intention. And then they needed a lot of money, and then they got a ton of investors, and then a couple of millions and billions flew over the counter, and suddenly they're forced to make money. And they cannot make the choices that need to be made. That's as much as I would say to overlay plugins. But we don't need overlay plugins. And this is a difficult argument to overcome, because your customer might say, yeah, you know, if I use this overlay plugin, it's like 50 bucks a month and I'm done. And you're telling me I have to rebuild an entire website, which will cost me thousands. And again, it's the financial argument. I'm going to come back to how to counter those in a few, right? I'm just building up here. Okay, then we have fear. Fear of restriction. You cannot do that. No, not. It's all these negatives. Or fear of repercussions. People say, ah, accessible websites can't be beautiful. They're always ugly. Look at that government website. Look at that tax website. They're all boring. That's not because you can't make a beautiful, accessible design. That's because the designers and their bosses are afraid to do it wrong. So they're going to stick to the absolute minimum and the WCAG guidelines and try not to take any risk. And this is something we need to get away from because if we can get designers to have their creative flow and to go crazy with what they want to do, but in a way that form never goes over function, we can create beautiful sites. I know award-winning accessible websites with, with beautiful designs, right? And then there is fear of the unknown. Because we all know that if I make my site accessible, it's so much work. Because we live in WordPress, we live in an all-in-one culture. We are given tools with which we suddenly are the developer and the designer and the content creator and the marketing and the CEO person all in one. Which is nice, because it means you as a solo person can actually set up a complete website. 
But still, all these jobs are different disciplines. And people are not being educated about what they might do, should have to do differently. We have a tendency to use no and not a lot. Okay, we all want to do things right. So when we see something that isn't right, you're like, don't do it that way. You cannot do this. You shouldn't do that. You cannot use that feature. Who here likes sliders? Nobody likes sliders? I have a room with 100% people who don't like sliders? What do you do when your customer likes sliders? Are you going to tell them you can't use sliders? Hmm? What? You don't like sliders, but you're not telling your, the people around you they shouldn't use them? Hmm. That's going to be an interesting session here, guys. All right. You cannot use that tool. Or, you know, ah, I'm drifting off again, happens to me all the time. You know, telling people no and not is decapacitating. I practiced for half an hour before I could say that word. Okay. The fear of legal liability. Are you all aware of the legislation around accessibility, the upcoming European Accessibility Act in Europe in June, that is actually going to bite private companies? Does, did it ever occur to you that, for example, a hosting company that sells a domain to a private person has a business-to-consumer process and has to be fully accessible? Did you know that? Do you know how much business we can conduct in the next couple of years? I know, that sounds mean to use that argument, but this is the argument that you need. Okay. People can also be afraid of getting sued. I'm not going to mention the fines, you're going to faint. Then, people who are afraid that they can get fired. And it's overwhelming, right? It feels like rocket science. And why should it? Why should we worry when we are content creators about the development part? or the other way around. These disciplines need to work together. And getting people to work together is what is going to help you to counter arguments. The documentation is drier than the Sahara in midsummer. Has any one of you ever tried to read the WCAG guidelines? Right? Yeah, me too. I was like, I don't get it. I really didn't get it. I panicked. And then I found that there are people on the web that absolutely rock, explaining this from what I say geek speak to human speak. I have a link on my page from a company that creates lovely videos that are like one minute, two minutes, and you can show these videos to your colleagues and to your friends. And you will see that all of a sudden they go like, it's not that hard, right? Okay. Let me tell you a secret. The basis to countering arguments against accessibility is that everybody wants to be liked. If you understand that, then you will realize that you want to be liked. It's difficult to say something that is negative, or can be perceived as negative, but the person sitting in front of you has the exact same issue. Maybe you are telling this person something, and he thinks, if I have to take this to the management, 
they are going to tear my head off. Or they're going to laugh at me. Or So again, there is this, always this fear surrounding this. So that is the first thing to get out of the way when you are working in accessibility. To motivate, you need to understand what demotivates. You know, creating people identify themselves with what they do for a living. So if you say it's not right what you're doing, it feels like you are not allowed to be here. You, 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 I don't want you around here. And then someone is mad and doesn't process any information. So, first establish that whoever is sitting there in front of you is okay as they are. I wrote a blog article about that where I said, it's perfectly fine to have an inaccessible website. It's not fine to have an inaccessible website when you know that it should be accessible. But you have to create that ease. Okay, so again, the basis for countering voiced and unvoiced arguments, love and empathy. And some people will say to me, Anne, that is such a soft topic. Why are you talking about love? We cannot speak about love in business. Business is hard shit. This is money and this is hours of work. And and again, remember, people want to be like. Okay? What is important is your empathy towards them. Your empathy about their worries and fears. And this doesn't only go for accessibility, this goes for everything in life. Okay. But then also, you start to establish their empathy or motivate their empathy towards the end users that they develop and design for. The clarification of the joy of what they've done instead of using can't. You have to come from yes instead of no. And every time you get opposition, step back and test yourself and just think, did I just come from yes, or did I just come from no? Because it's easy to come from no. And the most important thing for people to understand what accessibility is, is to understand the why. So there are a lot of unsolid arguments, right? Because I and the gov official guidelines say so. Did that ever motivate you? If someone was talking to you like that, you got to do it like that because this is the rule? Hmm? I don't see yes. Okay. And saying because it's the right thing to do is not as solid as you think. Like I said in the beginning, everybody will say, yeah, yeah, it's the right thing to do. But as soon as they think it costs money or it's not going to bring them any money, they'll say it's somebody else's right thing to do. Okay. And then remember, your why may differ from their why. My why is a social one. My why is an egotistical one, because I hate 80% of all websites. When they're going bling, 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 and moving, and the buttons are too small, and I can't navigate a website with one hand when my shoulder is inflammated again, right? And then you have to get into what they know. Now, what does everybody know? Everybody knows or understands what it's like when you can't read the newspaper without glasses. Because if they don't know that, they can even imagine that, right? Hearing. Is there anyone in the room here who, who feels that with age their hearing is going down? I'm one of them. Right? Especially in rooms like this, when a lot of people are talking, I'm like, eh? Did you know that people who grew up without hearing have another perception of text than we do? Who knew that? Oh, you're learning stuff here today. 
This is why closed captioning is so important in videos. They need to have the time to read something and they need to be able to stop and start the text. Fatigue. Don't we all know this experience? You've been going out on Friday and Saturday and Sunday, the lights are too much. And then you have to go and order online and you come on this beautiful white and bright side where you go like, okay, where are my sunglasses? Those are things that make people walk away from a website unconsciously. And this is a big factor in your arguing with managers, for example, because they always want numbers. And then you can ask them, okay, do an A-B test. An inaccessible website with bad color contrast is like a bad smell. You know, these sh you come into a shop and it like stinks a little bit. And you have to stand in the line. And after a few minutes, you start thinking, mm, I can buy that online. I'm, I'm not going to stay here. And you're walking out. This is an unconscious process. On the web, this is a conversion that didn't happen. And if you start talking conversions to the people who are handing, handling the money in a project, then suddenly you're talking on another level. Oh, packaging frustrations. You know those packaging where you need concrete shears to open them, these wonderfully plastic glued packages? Shopping frustrations, no labels. An annoying lack of information. If you can't find your way around. Those are experiences, if you find the analogies to that, with which you convince everybody working on a website to make it more accessible. Does anyone here know IKEA? You all know IKEA, yeah? You all know how wonderful it is in IKEA if you have to go to the bathroom? They're going to make you run through all the lanes until you get to that bathroom three stories down. If you're sitting with someone who doesn't understand what an accessible website experience means, someone who cannot relate to that because they have all their faculties working fine, Take them to a website with a mega menu without a skip link. Because then they will see that every time they change a page, they will have to tap through that menu five million times. It's what I call the IKEA experience. All right. And then, very important, if you are coaching a group of people in this regard, show them their power. We have the power, we create the web. We are the ones that can say, if we're on the development side and say, hey, listen, underline that link. This is the CSS for that. This is how you do that. And suddenly that site becomes usable for a lot of people. You show them the power and show them their joy. If you conduct user testing, if you get your, your bosses and your, your employers and, and everyone around you to allow you to do user testing, share the joy that these people have when you solved something. This is so empowering. So, are you already thinking of ways of how you can convince the decision makers? You're not asking many questions here, huh? <laughs> okay. One thing that many people don't realize, my time is up. <laughs> We're going to come to the questions now. Is that people using assistive technology cannot be measured. It's not measured like a browser is not measured as a persona. You cannot measure this for privacy reasons. So 
the management is going to come and ask you for the numbers, and you're going to appeal to their common sense. I was speaking about conversion before. If you manage to explain that accessible websites convert better, like I have an example on my site where a British supermarket invested in making their web shop accessible. They threw in 35k, and it got them 13 million additional revenue every year. 20 years ago. Can you imagine what we can do now? Okay, so I brought on a couple of arguments. I've told you some of the arguments. What are you? Do you have arguments that you hear from the people around you against accessibility? Not my target group. Not my target group. Oh, I love that one. I love that one. So. Let's think of a case. They're not my target group, like a company that sells running shoes. People in wheelchairs are not my target group.、Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, walking on high heels is not my favorite thing to do. So I will say there are women who don't like to walk on high heels, but they still have to go. To to a, a nice event, and then they have to walk in high heels, and they want to look pretty, and they will wear high heels. Why wouldn't people in, who cannot walk not wear running shoes? What convinces you so much that they are not your target group, especially in shops that are、uh, making a lot of money, where only half a percent more is a lot of dough? Have you ever tried using that argument? Bernard, I used to say maybe the person buying the thing is not the person using it. Yes, that's a、like、good one as well. Yeah.、Uh, yeah. This is、people. this is also a great one when I speak about color blindness. Did you know that one in twelve men is color blind? That's eight percent. And then you add this wonderful color picker to your website. And as a designer, you think, I don't want to write that orange is orange. Anybody can see it's orange, but someone who's colorblind doesn't see it's orange. And maybe this colorblind person wants to buy a present for his friends. He needs, to, or she, because they're also colorblind women, need to be able to see what they're buying. All right. Anyone else? Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, I know a farm plugin that does that. <laughs> this is、um, a very sad thing, actually, right? This is this is companies treating accessibility as a popularity contest. Like like we add feature requests.、Um, I'm using this social media tool, for example, and I've been begging them for 18 months. Can you please give us the possibility to add alt text? And they were using this Trello board, and the Trello board was a popularity contest. And this is a really difficult discussion. So I like that you that you bring up this point. And this is where I would implore all of you to learn about the power of analogies. Like I have. Given you some examples of that, and speak with these developers because they don't know what's heading for them with the legislation, but also they don't understand that they are actually、um, missing out on a fantastic selling argument and selling point in their own product. And again, of course, it's it's all about money again. But that's in our business the argument that works. And I saw a form plugin, for example, that will not 
allow us to change the labels. We can turn them on, we can turn them off, but we cannot change them in such a way that, that they are accessible. So, this is getting in the way of a good website, of a good experience. And now, the lawmakers are tired of it, and they're going to force... And this is where you are bringing the fear argument as the last one. But don't make it the main argument. Say like, okay, you can be very afraid and wait and wait and wait and wait until you have to do it. Or you can start doing it now. And you break it down for them. Like the content team can make sure that not all the links are click here. For the people who are new to this topic, why is click here a bad thing to do in a website? Imagine you're in Ikea, again, and you ate some chili that was a bit off, and you have to run for the bathroom, and all the signs say, here. Wouldn't that be a great experience? And I know this is a very, very, um, how do you say that? Very uh, uh, visual example, but it's one that people will remember. Right? Does anyone else have a great argument against accessibility that was difficult? Yeah, Go. so I work with a lot of web creators and I hear a lot, I don't have the resources to prioritize right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are arguments that you can't win. Oh, darn it. So I still love <laughs> that one? I was hoping to hear an argument I today. What do you tell them? But, uh, I tell them, look, if you want to optimize your website for different screen sizes, you might as well do this one too, because it's kind of in the same lane. Uh, it's the strongest one I had. It doesn't feel strong enough, but at least it's something. I think there would be a lot of power in large companies creating products for people to create websites with, if they also would start to co-educate their users. That would be a great thing. Wouldn't you like to have that? Did you, by the way, all know there's a fantastic plugin called the Accessibility Checker? It's a free plugin. You can download it from the re repo. And if you install it, it's going to tell you while you are creating your website on your own server. It's not going to some other funky server in far away San. And it's telling you live, hey, you can adjust this and you can adjust that. And then you will see that it's quite easy to do so. And if you show a tool like that to your friends and your colleagues and your coworkers, it's going to become a lot easier. It's going to become less stressful. Right. So does anyone else have questions or remarks or Thank you so much, and this is such a great talk. Thank you for sharing your journey with us. Now we are open for Q&A. We just did the Q&A. <laughs> official Q&A, so official from now on. Q &A. I forgot to give you one slide. Hey, it's not there. Okay. Okay. That slide is missing. Um, no, I created one slide with a very big link written on it. It's Anne's link, A-N-N-E-S dot link, slash meetup dash E-N. And this is the page where all the resources were, and the slide is missing. I'm very sorry. If you want to have this slide or this link, come and find me on Twitter, I'm there as Bovelet. Come find me on LinkedIn. Come find me here in WordCamp. I'm here for the next three days, four to five. I'm five days here in Taipei if you're staying longer. Just come and find me. Okay. Thank you.
questions? Yes. Yes. Okay, so most of the time as a manager, I have to deal with designer yeah. and developer. Yeah. So developers are like, uh, I'm the boss here. Mm -hmm. And it's really complicated task to do. And the designers are like, okay, uh, you have to do it just because of accessibility or you need to make this more uh, user friendly. Yeah. So it's like something like, you know, husband and wife mm -hmm. quarreling. <laughs> and I'm just seeing here. And sometimes it's a little bit difficult to manage them together because the designer is the expert in design, designing sector and the developer mm -hmm. is definitely, I respect him or herself because they're the expert in developer, development end. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, so it's a fear grown into me that I'm going to lose them if I talk too much. So yeah. how to manage that very well? I want your experience in this case. Yeah, Thank you. I get it. I get it. Thank you. This is a wonderful, wonderful point that you're bringing up here. Again, so this is listening to someone from a managing position. And this is a point of view that we rarely hear. So thank you. Again, this is about under mutual understanding, right? And when a developer gets this angry, it's usually because he's like, you're disturbing my time, or I, maybe he doesn't really know how to do it. Or she, or she, I use he a lot, but I always mean everyone, right? Um, so when you have this situation, it means you need to create a mutual understanding. It could also be the other way around. So when a designer, for example, says it needs to be done like this, and the developer says, hey, buddy, but that's not accessible if you do it that way. It's the same situation. So what is important here is to sit down with all of them and explain again, like, I'm not attacking you. This is what I need to do. This is what we need to do to accomplish this mutual goal. Are you in an agency? Yes. So you are with your agency. You're trying to achieve this goal. And the, the person buying the website wants it to be accessible, right? right? So there is anger there. And this is the anger that you need to flush with water, like you would quench a fire. So trying to find ways to find that they are empathizing towards each other for developers, like it's really hard to find the right resources on how to make something accessible. So this, this is more like, it's too much work, I'm pushing this away. So this is where I would say to you, if you are a non-developing manager, then get them to explain to you why they think it's hard or ask them if they need time and resources to research it, because most of the time, this is a matter of deadlines. And what is most important for everyone here who is managing teams and is walking into this, please understand learning about accessibility takes time. And more and more resources are created online. One of them, if I preach for my own choir, is, is um, at the hackathon next uh, week in CloudFest. We're going to create a central resource for accessibility frameworks. Um, but it's hard for most developers to easily find the resources, so you can help them by finding those resources for them or ask your developer, like, what do you need? How, how would you like me to help you and support you to learn about this? It's the same thing like a marketing department that says, we cannot add alt text to the images because it takes way too much time. That's not for the content creators to decide because time is money. That's for the management to decide. So this is a problem you take to the management. And if you have someone over your head in the management, this is also a direction that you need to go in. And talk to them because you will all need time 
to study this subject so you can ease back and say, hey, easy peasy, man, I know how this goes. And it's the same thing with designers. It's one thing I forgot to tell you during the presentation where designers say, yeah, you know, I just created this corporate design and these are the colors that we have to use. And I will say something like, cool, but when are you going to get creative? And this is passive aggressive. This is me contradicting myself, saying you have to come from yes. But sometimes you have to rattle someone and make them think in new ways. And the same goes for developers. How do I find a way around this? How do I use this color set in such a way that the function is not pushed away by the form? Did I help you with this answer? Or would you like to know more? Because then you have to come to me after the presentation. Yes, that was helpful. Thank you. From different perspectives. Yes. Yeah. This is the thing. Look at everything from a different perspective. Step into the shoes of your users and of your colleagues and, your, and even of your competitors. Because if you're doing accessible things, you're doing better than your competitors if they're not. Any more questions? Now we're really done. <laughs> Thank you so much, Anne. And I'm pretty sure if anyone has any more questions, feel free to find Anne at conference later today. And thank you again, Anne, thank you. Thank you. On the behalf of WordCamp Asia, we would like to give you this thank you gift. Thank you for this amazing presentation. Thank you very much. Thank, and you. thank you for a great thank organization. You. <laughs> thank you all for coming here. And see you around. <laughs>